One of the reasons why you may be purchasing an IUL is because it allows you to take tax-free distributions in retirement. These tax-free distributions are possible because they come by way of a loan. Whether you take a loan from a bank, your rich Uncle Louie, or a life insurance policy, the IRS doesn't tax you on it. But there's a huge catch in all of this that your financial professional may not be telling you. While all loans from IULs are tax-free, they aren't all cost-free, and these costs can ultimately bankrupt your IUL well in advance of life expectancy, leaving you with a huge tax bill from the IRS. So before taking the IUL leap, you must confirm that your IUL is tax-free and cost-free. Figuring out whether your IUL allows for tax-free and cost-free loans is what we'll be talking about in today's video. Okay, let's go back to Life Insurance 101. When you take a loan from your IUL, you're effectively taking a loan from the life insurance company itself. Here's how it works. You call up the company and say, I'd like to take a loan for $10,000. They take $10,000 out of your growth account and put it into a loan collateral account where it earns a rate of interest. For this example, we'll say 3%. In the very same transaction, the life insurance company sends you a loan from their own coffers. Now, this is a loan, so you should expect it to come with an interest rate. Let's say that's also 3%. When you die, all the money in the loan collateral account is used to pay back the outstanding loan that you have with the company. If the interest charge on the loan is the same as the interest being credited in the loan collateral account, the net cost to you over the course of your lifetime is zero. In short, you asked for $10,000, you received $10,000 in the mail, you, your growth account went down by $10,000 and you never paid any tax. That's how distributions from your IUL, when executed properly, qualify as tax-free. Now that you know how distributions from your IUL can be tax-free, let's talk about some of the dangers that may crop up along the way. In a perfect world, the rate of interest the insurance company credits to the IUL's loan collateral account is exactly the same as what they charge in the loan account. In other words, if they always credit you 3% and they always charge you 3%, then the net cost to you will always be zero, thus tax-free and cost-free. However, some companies will tell you that they'll always credit you 3%, but then they'll also reserve the right to charge you 4%, 5%, or 6% at their sole discretion. Sounds a bit like having their fox in your chicken coop, right? Here's how that situation might play out. Let's say you sign up for an IUL without reading the fine print. Your life insurance company credits your loan collateral account 3%, but decides to charge your loan account 5%. In this instance, the net cost for you to borrow is 2%. While 2% doesn't seem like such a big deal, it can actually be a major drag on your IUL's cash value over time. Here's why. If you fail to pay that 2% interest back at the end of the year, the company will simply subtract it from your cash value. Then, if you take an additional loan in year two, they'll charge you another 2%. Only you haven't paid back the loan from year one, so they'll charge you for that loan again. As you take additional loans from your policy, the interest owed continues to grow and compound. As it does, it creates a bigger and bigger drag on your cash value. If the cumulative expense of these loans overwhelms the growth of your IUL, it can end up bankrupting your policy years in advance of life expectancy. In that case, you would lose your death benefit and get a hefty tax bill from the IRS. The best way to protect yourself against lousy loan provisions is to make sure that the company that sponsors your IUL gives themselves as little wiggle room as possible. In a perfect world, you want the amount they credit your loan collateral account and the amount they charge for loans to always add up to zero. If they can slap a guarantee on that provision, all the better. Here's why. If a company guarantees they will always credit your loan collateral account at, say, 3%, and they guarantee they will always charge your loan account say 3%, then the net cost to you will always be 0%. Thus tax-free and cost-free, guaranteed right in the contract. Remember, it's always tax-free per the IRS, but the cost-free part is up to the insurance company. That's why it's so important to shop around and ask informed questions. Be sure to do your IUL research with your eyes wide open before tying the knot. There's nothing worse than discovering that you've locked in a 2% low provision when you're 10 years into your IUL contract. Furthermore, not only should a good loan provision charge you no net interest, it should make that fact clear with language that is clear and unambiguous. A bad loan provision, on the other hand, not only has a net cost, but can be shrouded in legalese, nebulous terms, and convenient escape clauses. Consider the following zero-cost loan provision. Quote, after the fifth policy year, we guarantee that we will offer zero-cost loans. The annual interest rate charged on zero-cost loans is guaranteed to be 3.5%, which is the same rate we guarantee to credit on zero-cost loans, close quote. Notice how the amount being credited is exactly the same as the amount being charged starting in the first day of the sixth year. What's more, the word guarantee is used on three separate occasions. This is a classic example of an ironclad guaranteed 0% loan provision. 
Contrast that with the following example of a non-zero cost loan. Quote, the annual interest rate on a policy loan will be 8% for the first 10 policy years, 7% for policy years 11 through 20, and 6.5% for policy years 21 and later. We guarantee we will credit the loan account at 6%. The maximum guaranteed net cost of loans is 2% annually and may be less, close quote. All right, here's where you may wanna pause the video and go back and see if you can honestly follow exactly what was going on here. Let's break it down and see if we can decipher the implications for the policy holder. At first glance, it appears that the loan charge over the first 20 years will drop from 8% to 7% and then ultimately to 6.5%. It also appears that the company guarantees that they'll credit the loan collateral account at 6%. So on the surface, the worst case scenario appears to be net half a percent loan costs after the 20th year. That's a 6.5% loan charge minus a 6% loan credit. However, note the very last sentence, quote, the maximum guaranteed net cost of loans is 2% annually and may be less, close quote. In other words, notwithstanding everything they told you in the first two sentences, the worst case loan provision could still be as high as 2%. They intend to reduce the loan charge from 8% to 6.5% over the first 20 years, but they're not willing to guarantee that. It may result in a half percent loan provision, but then again, it may not. The policyholder has no assurances. Are you beginning to see how the devil is in the details when it comes to these loan provisions? In summary, if you want tax-free and cost-free distributions in retirement, it's imperative that you investigate your IUL's loan provision before entering into a long-term commitment. The financial cost of overlooking this critical attribute can add up quickly. A few well-regarded IUL companies do offer the guaranteed zero-cost option. By excluding all non-guaranteed zero-cost loan alternatives, you can quickly narrow the field of viable IUL candidates. If you would like some help implementing a balanced, comprehensive approach to tax-free retirement that shields you from the impact, of higher taxes, head on over to DaveMcKnight.com and click on the Connect with an Advisor button. I'm happy to refer you to an advisor in the Power Zero network that has been trained, vetted, and qualified personally by me. If you are a financial professional and want to learn how to become a certified Power Zero advisor, head on over to PowerZero.com and opt into my free video series. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to drop them into the comment section below. I respond to every single one of them personally. And don't forget to click like, subscribe, and the bell so you never miss a video. This is David McKnight. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.